Good old Black Betty. Ramble him. Uh, oh, you're welcome for that. <laughs> That's definitely going to get in the show. That's for sure. Oh, Black Betty. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> going in a video. 100%. Shop podcast with Mike Coffey of Coffee Custom Builds, Daniel Dunlap of Daniel Dunlap Woodworks, Peter Kapar of Petrie's Workshop. You can find us all as well as the podcast on Instagram and YouTube. I don't remember the music, Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 77, double seven of another Witch Out podcast where we will go behind the scenes and find out the truth behind the missing mayo. We'll tell you the secrets that Big Mayo doesn't <laughs> want you to know about. But first, a word from our sponsors. Oh, Big Mayo is our sponsor this week. Uh, <laughs> thanks mayo. to Big Mayo. No, uh, our sponsors are, of course, patrons. Patrons, you can find or you can become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash another woodshop podcast. And Matthew Gerard did just that. He's our latest member of the meh army. Not only that, he's a $20 VIP meh. What? Whoa. So he gets a sticker from Matt. Dan. Well, he, yeah. he doesn't just get a sticker, but he's he's going to get himself something special if uh, he pays attention to the uh, Let's Patre- the top. That's right. The Patreon <laughs> page. Yeah, yeah. Mike, tell so them more. After the show tonight, we will get a post up for the patrons. It will be up for one week. And if you're a patron, all you have to do is just respond something silly to this post. I think what we decided, what our favorite sh- moment from the show, just tell us your favorite moment from favorite the show. Favorite show title. Favorite, favorite show, show title, title slash moment slash thing uh, that Dan like said. That. Slash cookie Guess. recipe. Slash cookie recipe. Guns and Roses. Last four of your social. Things, Mother's maiden slash, name. La- the first nine of your social. And uh, we're good to go. No, no first three, uh, last six. That's it. Yeah, right. Keep it, keep it simple. No, so yeah, get in there. And if you're a patron, you can get in. And we have five tumblers with the AWP logo on there. We're giving away. And then for the VIP patrons, um, we're going to do another post. I don't know what that's going to be. You just have to say me or I or something that you're there. But um, we're going to make another tumbler, special tumbler that just has the AWP logo. And then mine, Dan, and Pete's logo on the back. I feel as well, like the so. $20 patrons, they deserve it. They're all entered. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They're automatically yeah. entered. We'll pull they the list. It. We'll do it that way. That's they made idea. it. You're right. I like doing it, it live. Twenty dollars patrons. You don't have to do anything. We don't need another post. You're just going to be uh, entered automatically, automatically, actually. Automatically. Um, yeah. So big thanks to our patrons. You guys are awesome. And uh, we'll be announcing when the post will be up through next week. So if you wanted to become a patron, now's the time. And uh, if you didn't want to become a patron, uh, you should do that anyway and go against your gut instincts and become a patron. So. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> you can win a tumbler <laughs> no it's a uh, upwards of 24.99 value depending on where you buy it from um Stop anyway, saying the value just it. say it's, <laughs> well, it's got the special logo on it so the value goes up a little bit yeah. we got we got oh, the sorry. guy that made them we got him to come down on a price because he wanted to charge yeah. like 50 dollars for shipping and handling he was really he was really a jerk uh also we're starting a new segment well, we're not starting it we're kind of getting it going now but dan doesn't know it but he's gonna sing right now and that's our new review segment. So, uh, Dan, you already gave me the audio clip for that. So thank you so much. I did. <laughs> Same. Yeah. You sang it right before we started. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be oh. I hope you guys like that. That was good. Um. Oh. <laughs> Not like a little copyright strike right before the reviews. <laughs> I can't remember what I sang. I can't remember what I sang. Well, my memory's that bad, everybody. Black Betty. Anyway, so. uh... (laughs) Oh, Oh, Black uh, Betty. Bam, bam. That's going to be the new track uh, when we go into that. This is why I'm hot. (laughs) This is why I'm hot. Um, All right, we got several new uh, reviews. I think there's three. I don't know if we got this uh, one about six in a row. That's the new one. There's four. Yeah. So this uh, five out of five star review is from Regalst, which I believe is Lee from Regal Street. Regalst. Uh, Hi, my name is RJ. I used to have ED, but ever since I listened to episode six, oh, ever since I listened to six episodes in a row of this magnificent trio, all I want to do is tap that ash. Thanks, guys. You saved me. <laughs> Hammy out. <laughs> RJ Hammy. RJ, RJ Hammy, thank you for you. checking in. Thank what a great double, okay. triple, like, lead in there. Lee. Oh, she's Good okay. 
<laughs> Could be Danielle. Uh, <laughs> uh, Camo's Woodshop says game changer five out of five. Ever since I started listening to AWP, my credit score my credit score has increased a hundred points. Hey. My car's extended warranty has been my car's extended warranty has been extended due to answering the potential scam phone calls. Not to mention the gas mileage I've increased in my car because I'm using Bluetooth to listen to it. <laughs> Love the show. Facts. Look forward to hearing it each week. Facts. Cameron, thank you, Cam. Yeah. Uh, Najessa. Oh, this is Jen from JS Handcrafted. Uh, my dog loves them. No, really. My dog loves them. <laughs> five out of five. <laughs> Big thanks. Uh, uh, Crash Punk, five out of five, says, I can ride a bike again. <laughs> I used to have insane hemorrhoids. But because of AWP, <laughs> burning and itching has finally gone away. Thanks, AWP. <laughs> hey, this is where... I've noticed... I've noticed that a lot of these reviews like have something to do with itching. Have you noticed this? I we're think like, that's like our third like, or fourth review that has something to yeah. do with itching. I so mean, we're like either baby powder or uh, I don't know, like crystals. We sell a lot lotion. of ailments, but <laughs> gold bond powder, <laughs> oils, natural oils or whatever. Natural oils. Just rub some kumquat oil. That was on fantastic. It. It'll be better. <laughs> um, uh, wait, I have a little thing to drop in there. Because there yes. was a couple of confused bodies in the pre-show. We are going to be at the Blackthorn Resort for the Maker Camp uh, this October. I believe it is the 9th we're going to be there. It's a Saturday. Yeah. Yep, Dan, you're flying on the 7th. It's okay. That's in the future, buddy. Calm down. Um, I was trying to count to nine. <laughs> to nine with two hands. It's, it's impossible. Don't even try. So we are all going to be there. Dan, Mike, and myself. And Emma, actually, we're all going to be uh, at the Maker Camp on Saturday. So keep an eye out for us. Uh, if you're trying to get tickets, I think there might still be tickets available. There might not for be the a very short tickets, period of time, but there are also so there's uh, basically viewing tickets where you just like get to look and then you get to look and touch Looking's for free, more money. But it's not free. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> looking's not free. Touching's going to cost you. So if you're in the area, if you want to, you know, Come by and do an elbow bump or open mouth kiss, whatever stage of COVID we're at. <laughs> you know, uh, we'll see you guys there. That's it. Just want to shout it out. Right on. Um, and that's in East Durham, New York. Yeah. Right on, right on, right on. Durham. East Durham. 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 Uh, which is my favorite of all the hams. All the hams. Um, well, we've got through all that stuff. Oh, we didn't get through what's on my bench. We got to do that part. Dan's uh, got to sing again. His beautiful Again? Voice. All right. Dan, uh, you know what, Dan, what's on your bench this week? Not a whole lot. I know you're shocked, but like, I'm sure I got after last week's show, I got knocked on my rear end. I thought I, I literally thought I had COVID. So I went and took a, a COVID test and I just got the results back like yesterday or this morning, this morning, it's Thursday. I don't, I didn't have the COVID, but what I had was a, a, a pretty nasty sinus infection, which like it, it's still lingering. I'm still like nasally sounding and I still have a little bit of like, uh, phlegm in my throat. That was a sexy sound, wasn't it? A little Did general like grievance. That? <laughs> That's a general yeah. grievance. Grievance. Um, okay. ah. So anyways, uh, that kind of knocked me out for a while. I was, I was out of the shop for a couple of days and uh, I've been working on uh, the slide tables that I have to make and send to San Francisco, I almost said New York, but that's the wrong side of the country. So I have to make those, send them to San Francisco. I made a uh, uh, a mosaic and I, I put a like a collegiate sign in the middle of it. I thought that turned out pretty cool. Go sports. Yeah, people like sports. Yeah. People like the sports. You know, the holidays are coming up, so I'm trying to ramp up and like offer new things and Hopefully, don't get sued. <clears throat> don't come at me, NCAA. And then... Uh, don't even mention them. Yeah. Sorry. Can you cut that part out? No. Nope. Yeah, it's a loud. <laughs> anyway, I, I was working on something else, and I can't remember what it was. Eh. 15 end tables? Oh, yeah. End Four. tables. I'm working on end tables. <laughs> uh, I have to make a an end table that's... The base is going to look like like a just a, like a collection of sticks and i need to figure out a, a way bundle to bundle of them <laughs> yeah a bundle of sticks is, is this dan <laughs> i need you to answer honestly is what this, is this you, you you just trying to get rid of scraps no 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 no, no. <laughs> they're like i'm actually making 
make sticks. What if I just tie them together with twine? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to make it out of a Peruvian walnut, actually. So nice. it's going to look nice. I just need to figure out how to get them to connect and look okay. So I bought string? some. <laughs> no, I'm not going to use string. I'm going to use screws, drywall screws. Um, um, deck screws, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so I what I what I did was I went and bought some two by fours from Menards, mm. the place where you can't get mayo. What's your currently. price like on two by fours? Actually, it's not bad. It's come down quite a bit. It's I've been hearing uh, it's were, coming down in a lot of places. They were like three thirty nine. That's reasonable. For the premium stuff. It was like $12 in California at I, one point. Well, it was crazy high here too. It was like, I think it was like almost $10 or, or maybe a little uh, bit more. We were like nine or 10 bucks right now. I can't even believe this. A two by four prime white wood. It's two seventy seven. I would go load up on those right now if I was in That's California crazy. because crazy. those are going to be like a hot commodity if you know what I mean yep. pretty soon. Just saying. Because of the because of all the uh, fires i'm just saying you know oh i mean <laughs> you're you're not wrong i'm not making fire jokes i'm just you know no, giving you, financial who advice who um that in the pre-show <laughs> so yeah I've, I've been working on that also yes uh mike alluded to this i took a commission for mm-hmm. a very large door that i have to make for another client they're building a house you get to make it what what did i say did i say something you wrong have to make it Oh, I get to make it. Uh, so uh, this client is is building a brand new house, big, big, nice house. And uh, so I'm kind of like working with their architect and Ooh. they want a very large door. Uh, it orig- originally they wanted eight foot by, uh, I want to say 40 inches across. And it, they wanted out of solid quarter sawn white oak. And that was... That's what they specifically asked for, which is kind of mind boggling to me. Usually clients are just like, I want light wood. wood. I want wood. Light wood. Light wood. Yeah. Can you make the light wood these, dark? These folks, these folks wanted quarter sawn white oak. And I was like, all right. Yeah, now we're talking. So I'm making that. And I hadn't gotten around to buying the wood yet, which is probably a good thing because the they called me and they're like, hey, we're going to make that a nine foot door. I'm like, Oh, okay. I will write up a new in- invoice and send it off to you. And then I also have to make the uh, the uh, door jam for it and everything. I am not hanging that sucker. That thing is going to be like 300 pounds. I already told them. I will build the door. I will make all the necessary things for hinges and everything. I'm not hanging it. <clears throat> Ain't happening. Not, not this guy. I'm out. not that guy. Or you can have them sub it out. Oh, their contractor will do it. I'm not doing it. Oh, good. Yeah. This has already been negotiated and, and agreed upon. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, something that's coming up on my bench here pretty soon. Uh, other than that, I don't think I have a whole lot else going on. You know, just standard Etsy stuff, mail on out bow ties and whatnots. What about you, Mike? Um, I got a lot of, like, like pokers in the fire right now. I can't really talk about a lot of those things, but, um, but what I've actually been doing this week is just finishing up that big English elm table. Finally it, uh, I finished it last night, finished spraying it. It was two days of spraying. I did the bottom and then the top in that order. It was just a lot of spraying. Uh, I I really, I'm really proud of that table. It looks so good. The only things I'm waiting for now are a couple of brackets from Bidwell. They made me a couple brackets and um also what else am i waiting for well, i guess that's it actually just the two brackets from bidwell and then i've got to uh redo the feet uh, i put i put a threat huge heavy duty threaded inserts on the bottom of it to hold the uh for the are those from bidwell as well the rampa they're the threaded inserts are from rampa oh. but actually so i bought some off of uh they don't carry three eighths because these feet i got for it are big feet the they're big okay. the bolts are three but they do bolts. carry inserts right i'm not yeah they carry I... rampa oh, okay that's what i thought. yeah they carry rampa inserts that's all they carry if you use code coffee 10 10 off yes but, use they, coffee uh, 10. but they don't have they don't carry the three eighths they only carry the quarter inch because that's what everyone uses for all their c channel but rampa does have the three eighths threaded inserts and i'd reached out to them i was like look i do you have them they said yes we have them in packs of 100 i was like i need four 
could you help a brother out so that they sent me four four rampa inserts for that so i had bought some on amazon um and they were power tech and i wrenched them in and they broke in the piece of wood. snapped <laughs> yeah the, the the inserts broke they were garbage so I, I i got a bolt in there with some ca glue and i'm gonna it's in there i'm gonna actually reverse pull it out i'm gonna take it out of there with the ca glue and the bolt now, so i i feel like you could actually use that bag of 100 within the next like year with the projects you're taking it. i'm on. gonna order it i just didn't want to order it right now i mean oh, okay. i've actually could use it very soon um on the next but i can get for sure use it i just didn't need it right now i was like can you just anyway you're right 100 i could use it um so yeah I, i'm getting done with that table finally so i got my cousin coming over sunday um we're gonna wrap up the last bit we're gonna attach the hardware uh i had a piece of six inch by six inch eighth inch thick angle made from uh bidwell that's gonna go on the inside of the miter uh, so it's not visible on the inside just to reinforce that miter a bit i wanted to give that thing some strength um so it's just got a bunch of custom steel underneath it that you can't really see it's all hidden underneath there that's they didn't want any hardware visible so doing that i did have to add when i was do doing the job walk with them they asked that i i add a pocket to the back side or to the underside on the end of it and what it is basically is it's like a stop dado, but a big one. And it's going to go over the top of the pony wall and shroud the pony wall. It's going to be pretty neat. I never done anything like that. So um, I put a piece of plate steel in there for that to rest on the pony wall. So the wood doesn't get worn away or whatever. I don't know if that would even happen, but I just put that in there just to keep it safe. So um, anyway, how to do some design work for that. Um, luckily with Bidwell, um, I've got a really good relationship with them. They're really great. Um, I can send them a DXF. Uh, drawing of what I need and they'll just cut it on their machine because they have a, 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 a water jet to cut oh, out the dope. steel so they'll cut that's how they make all their C channels so they'll just cut it out for me and bend it with their brake shape machine so it's really nice I can get that stuff done and it um, you know they charge they charge a good price for that stuff um, and it comes powder coated it matches their C channel it's, it's really nice so um, and then uh, I've got a bunch of quotes out right now like a bunch of them I've got just like an insane amount of requests lately it's just been really great uh, I'm really getting inundated i've been spending a lot of time on administrative stuff lately i'm starting to uh just have a lot of that which is really really great to be able to have all those possible jobs so i'm working on that but also we finally got an appraiser at the new house so they're telling us the appraiser said he wouldn't give us the report until the first which is in a week from now if you're listening uh that'd be september 1st i don't know why it's going to take a week to write up this freaking appraisal i don't know how long it normally takes but i feel like it shouldn't take that long um, so we probably won't be closing until like the 7th of September on the new house. Um, and then from there, I'm just like in panic mode, trying to figure out why I got to get the shop moved. I'm really kind of panicking. So I got to get a lot of stuff done. So and that's, I, that's pretty far off from your original, like close date for that house, right? Yeah. We were supposed to close on the 16th, like two weeks ago, week and a half ago. So it's going to be almost a month late. And that's just because of appraisers out here in, in California. They can't find Jeez. them. So, um, so yeah, luckily a lot of makers in the community locally here have offered to help move, uh, which I really appreciate. And I will more than likely be taking up most of them on that. Uh, I was going to see if I can get a bunch of people down here, load up my trailer, load up some people's pickup trucks, drive down there, get everything unloaded, try to figure all that out. Uh, I got to get the CNC over there and um, the planer and the jointer and the CNC are going to be the hardest things. Those things are massive. So that's going to be tough. The new sander is ordered and that's going to ship on the 23rd so i gotta get that figured out and then which one uh, did you get again i got the laguna 37 2 it's the two-headed 37 inch sander it's the same one jeff over at two moose has um i wanted a wide belt but they didn't have laguna doesn't have a wide belt option in a single phase so i i just, i can't i don't think i'm gonna be able to get three phase so if i do end up getting three phase um then I may just immediately sell this one and buy another one. I don't know. Why we'll not? see. I really would like a wide belt. I, really bad. I'd like to. I hear like good things point. about the one you you got. I mean, yeah, it just really runs great. like he does single passes on that thing and he's done. Yeah, I was going to run 120 and 180 on it. So, because uh, everything comes off the CNC or kind of what I'm doing it like at 80 or 100 anyway. So, I'll just go 120, 180 for big panels and get it, get it done. Some of these tables, it's going to help with a lot too. So, um, <clears throat> we'll see. I don't know what I'm gonna do. We'll I gotta get that. I made a, I made a, I made a, stuff a to figure out. I made a post this past week about me using 
um, my drum sander, I have the 2550 mm-hmm. Laguna. And I made a I made a statement about how I wanted bigger. And somebody said, why would you ever need anything bigger than a 50? And I'm like, you you, you have to understand that. Yeah, it's different. You don't have to flip it around. And right. you, very rarely are you doing 50 inches. Most tabletops are 36 inches at max. Well, so de- depending on how heavy of a cut you take, sometimes you get that little like <clears throat> seam in the center where it just doesn't like. Yeah, also that. I mean, it, it comes with its headaches, but yeah, I, I really perfect. want that the machine too. System, the yeah. cantilever system, it, it, it does work and it will, but it's not perfect. If it's you have not. to rotate a, a panel and flip it around and rotate, um, you're going to have some weird lo- overline issues where yeah. you're just going to have to sand anyway. So it kind of eliminates the point. Double work, <laughs> like if, you, yeah. if you have to sand to fix your sanding work, it's like, okay, why did I even do this? So the, for me, the 37 inch width is going to be very good. Cause mo- like Dan just said, most tables are typically 36 and you know, they kind of go a little small in that. A lot of my tables are bigger than that. Really anything over that size is coming off the CNC pretty much at 120, And then we just hit it with the big orbital sander. So it goes pretty quick, but uh, a lot of the Etsy things that I've got, those are going to really benefit from that size sander because I'm going to have that new laser, which has a three foot by five foot bed. And that's going to come out of that machine and we can just throw it right onto that sander and get it going. Um, same with a lot of the CNC yeah. stuff for Etsy. Stores. I feel like those I, things. I feel like a, a good belt sander, it, it not only just sands, but it also flattens. It's a you very good that, machine yeah. for flattening. <clears throat> yeah. So when you're using that cantilever option, it doesn't quite work that well. Right. It's not as good. It's just, not, it's not supported on both sides anyway. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that sander. Um, and it's a 30 or 40 amp. It's a five horsepower motor. It's the same. It's a, it's not quite as, I think it's the yeah. same motor as the, the 18 BX. Um, so no, wait, that's a three horsepower. This is a five. So it's gotta be the same motor as the planer or the jointer. That's pretty bonkers. But anyway, um, Damn. it's pretty powerful. I'm excited about that. That's going to be a really good help, especially with all these tables and just everything. It's just going to be good to have. Um, but yeah, we're just getting stuff ready for the house Saturday. The people who are selling the house are actually out of the house. They're gone. They left as of, uh, yesterday. So we're actually going to be going down there Saturday to water the, the lawn while we're kind of waiting for everything to get figured out. I think the realtor is going to meet us down there with the keys so we can actually uh, take our my, my in-laws into the house uh, so they can kind of see things in there and walk them around. I'm going to, I got to take a look at something in the shop. So that's just, anyway, that was rambling on. Sorry guys. Yeah. That's just what's going on with my week. I just got a bunch of a bunch of plates spinning some, a bunch of stuff I can't really talk about. Unfortunately, I wish I could. There's some really cool, uh potential stuff coming down the pipe for coffee custom builds so we'll see how that all goes fingers crossed pete what about you oh hey it's my turn that's my slogan i don't know i'm stalling uh it's I had me video <laughs> me video <laughs> um so Not i funny I, I know it was terrible but i'm stalling for that time. joke was pediocre <laughs> that was that was a 10 out of 10 pete joke that, that is the show title Pediocre. <laughs> and once again, my scheme works perfectly because I either I either say the show title or I am the show title for like the last half a year. <laughs> the system Pediocre. works. <laughs> Pediocre. I love it. <laughs> so stupid. All right. So um, so last week I got that crazy tool haul with all the clamps and a bunch of wood and all that stuff. And then I got very frustrated with all that wood being in my shop, including all the stuff I brought over from the old place. <laughs> So I, I put in some time last, I think Friday and actually knocked out the lumber rack in the shed. So the entire back wall of the shed, when you open up the doors, I guess side wall, whichever you, you walk in through the side, that entire back section, I hung up the old um, rack, the racks from the old shop, which is actually, it's called, I have to look up the name. So people know what I'm talking about. It's called shelf track from closet made, but it's shelf track. Basically it's the stuff that has like parallel lines going up and down the whole thing. And then you put this like Mm -hmm. triangular shelf bracket Mm -hmm. in there and you can move it up and down. I never thought these were this heavy duty, but I've loaded them up at the old place. And this time I really pushed it. I went floor to ceiling with this thing uh, and loaded the thing up with wood way more than I had at the old place. And I've had no issues with any kind of sagging, no 
bolts are popping out or anything like that. You just got to make sure to secure it properly. I put in some, uh, uh, some like big old deck screws with a bunch of washers so that things not coming off the wall, but I've got slabs on there, all my wood. And then I have a whole section for just like less desirable plywoods and things like OSBs and whatnot. Cause they come in handy sometimes that, um, some of the slabs, including that like weird cherry slab that I just picked up that does definitely not look like a penis, but uh, <laughs> whatever. I got it. I'm happy with it. And it's got crazy like burl sections in it. So I'm excited to, uh, to do something with it. Uh, so I got that cleaned up. That took all the hardwood out of my shop. I will be putting up a, uh, one of those, uh, hungry dong racks up on a wall eventually yeah. to so kind of keep the choice stuff. Cause obviously it's in a shed, just like a lumber yard. You can't like go straight from lumber yard to working with the stuff. Cause it tends to move when you, you want to let it acclimate. So I'll bring choice stuff and stuff I'm going to work with into the shop, let it sit for a day or so, and then start working with it. Um, so that's that. Then uh, what else did I do this week? It was like a bunch. There's a whole list, Peter. Should have it up. Oh yeah, I finally, I had like a minute to actually catch up on my orders on Etsy. And I like to pre-pack certain things like the Festool, uh, like the cable clips for the the hose, uh-huh. hose cable, whatever. Where my hose at? Yeah, where my hose at? So I actually got to sit down, pre-pack all those. Those have been like flying off the shelf and I always have to scramble last, like when I get the order to pack them up and get all this stuff together. So I did that. I kind of caught up on everything I had to ship and started just printing stocks. I'm like, I'm well stocked right now. I feel really good. And it's like given such a peace of mind to have this stuff ready. Like an Etsy order comes in, I can just go boop, box, ship, you know? So it feels really good. And I don't have to put in a couple of days to get it all ready. Um, you guys know I was going back and forth on doing the epoxy floors in a shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, basically, do we? Yeah, decided that I wasn't going to do it a couple of days ago, and literally got- at like nine p.m., we get a text from you saying, "Guys, I decided not to do the, the epoxy. It's just going to take up too much time. I want to get my shop going." Literally, the next post I wake up to in the morning. The next day, it's got like a whole spread of rustoleum garage floor, pies. which has been like, there, by happened? the way. <laughs> Since before we moved in, I bought them probably like three weeks before we actually closed on the house. But I was, I finally got like fed up and I was, I was just like, I was getting annoyed because I want to just start making things. I'm tired of turning away work. Uh, but then as soon as what I did is I wanted to kind of lay out the shop. So I packed my trailer. I'm using it as my half car garage. So I have a two and a half car. Yay. <laughs> I'm basically just using it for storage and I'm going to continue doing that. That's amazing to have all that storage mm-hmm. in there. So I packed your it table full. Saw in there. No, no, no. I have a bunch of MDF for this big MDF job I'm doing on the CNC. It's all just sitting in, in there. I don't in a trailer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's there. Why not use it? Yeah. So I started packing stuff in there, and I started looking at the floor, and it was in it, it's in really rough shape as far as like stains and other crap and like oil stains and rust and whatnot. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna put in four days. Let me just get it knocked out. I, I've always wanted this floor. I it call me silly, but like I always thought silly. that like it looked really cool when a garage has that like rustoleum floor with the flakes and stuff. Uh, some people have told me not to do the flakes because when you lose stuff, you can't find it. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm gonna do the flakes because I just want that look. So I decided. I said off. screw it. I pulled everything out into the driveway, packed the trailer. So all my tools were in the driveway all day, and I scrubbed the hell out of my floors. Oh. I, you, Heck, whatever. Um, you can say it. So I, you have to like put a degreaser on there, mix it with water, and like rinse it off a bunch of times. So I rinsed that off two, almost three times. That sounds then, bad for the environment. No, it's actually uh, it's good. It says it can go in grass and stuff. So. Ducks love it. Ducks love it. <laughs> um, then I mixed the etching solution, and that stuff was hard to wash out. I think I rinsed my entire shop out like seven times. It was, it was nuts. I just kept having to rinse it off, squeegee it, rinse it, squeegee it. And I kept getting little bubbles forming, but eventually it was all gone. And uh, it's it's also like one of the most humid weeks we've had in a long time here. So I'm kind of fighting with humidity because you can't apply this floor when it's too, it's epoxy, it's not paint. So you can't apply it when it's too humid or too hot. And it's both right now. So I've been drying the the shop for the last 24 hours at this point, a little over. And it, the floor is dry, but the concrete like wall around the side is still a little wet. So I decided, you know what? We have an AC at the old place, like a window unit. I asked my dad to bring it up when he was coming up today. So he brought it over. I slapped it in the window and it's slowly dropping that humidity and the, uh, the temperature. So 
tomorrow Start. morning, I'm going to get in there and just do the whole half a section. So I'm doing it in half. So first I'm doing a backside because the floors are completely cleaned. Do the backside, wait the full 24 to 36 hours. And with the humidity and temperature balance in there with the AC unit, it's actually going to, it should be curing right on schedule. Then I'm going to move all the tools to the backside and then do the front of it. So if all goes well by this Sunday, I'm, I'm spinning up tools. That's, that's at least the Sweet. goal. So uh, that's exciting. it was like a four day derailment, but I'm going to be really happy that I did it. Um, and between all that, all those adventures, uh, I, I replaced a toilet today, which is the first time I swapped a toilet myself. Uh, it's super easy. Yeah, it uh, is. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of kicking myself for waiting this long. But yep, you can make it, it makes a nice little improvement on your house. Just put a nice toilet in there. Dude, I, mean, I had like all these original rocks. and I went with the chair height oval, which by the way, when I posted about those toilets, first of all, ha hashtag pooping with Pete was like a thing. It was still happening. You know, full swing. <laughs> it, it's still full happening. Full swing. Gross. But um, when I posted that, mad Hold people up. reached out to me and were like, yeah, screw round toilets, oval toilets all the way. I'm like, oh, this is a thing. Okay. But did you Actually, get a bidet? Cute. I no, I have a very good day. I replaced the toilet. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not getting a bidet, Dan. Bidet. I'm not getting a bidet. <laughs> I'm mad he is. Anyway, he's so he's so upset. It's fine. Yeah, if you you're can poop have to wipe, on your hand. Do you just wipe it off to, with dry paper? Dan, you're gonna have to wipe your butt with Charmin Ultra like a savage. I'm bringing my ply. own bidet. I'm bringing a carry-on bidet. <laughs> I have, I have I toilet paper so fluffy in my house Nebraska that like, man people get concerned it's going to cost clogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Home Depot and buying a bidet just so I can use While it. While you're in house. Jersey? <laughs> a, a portable bidet? Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Fantastic. Travel. Uh, travel. Travel bidet. Travel bidet. I'll just hose you off in the yard. Anyways, that, that's, oh, that's fine. my week. Dan I'm, I'm excited to tomorrow morning. <laughs> Watch your dupa. Oh, Pardon me. Do you have any banaka? <laughs> but banaka. But banaka. But banaka. Right. That's it. All right. That's uh, let's get into questions. That's been my. All right. We all had Only a lot of stuff going on. Uh. Well, I lost them. Oh, there they are. There let's they is. See, I didn't. There they is. I should Who's have it? them up and ready to Michael go. Michael Minard. Where, where is he from? from? Uh, yeah. Split. Split finger. Uh. Well, he'll tell us right here. It's split yeah. finger, though. I know that for sure. Hey, guys. This is Mike Maynard from Splinter Fingers. We're working on Instagram. And I got a question. I just recently finished my first cutting board, and I put two pieces of Paduk in the cutting board. And I put in the mineral wall on it and uh, Howard's uh, cutting board. Uh, conditioner there was still orange coming through the finish so I tried re-sanding it some and putting a Wacto brand board conditioner that is kind of more like a film type finish and it still does it luckily this was a board for myself and not for a customer so uh, any tips, did I do something wrong or is this natural? And does it hurt anything to sell boards like this? Because I don't feel comfortable selling them where they're leaking oil like this. Uh, love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. I'm throw it to Dan because he seemed to have an understanding of this situation. Yes. Uh First of all, like the orange that you're getting on your rags or whatever, I, I assume you're using to wipe uh, the oil on your boards. The orange is dust particles from the Paduke. So if you're sanding it to get rid of the, the orange, you're just making it worse. So one of the best ways to get rid of that orange is to wipe it down a bunch or use compressed air and blow the crap out of it. Mm -hmm. It's really tough. I'm going to tell you that that much. It's tough because Paduk really turns into like a fine powder when you dust, when you sand it, it's notoriously terrible to get rid of. And uh, yeah, it's difficult. You, you really need to uh, take your time to uh, 
clean up the board before you oil it. Uh, I like I said, like I said, I suggest uh, compressed air as much as possible. If if you're not using compressed air, whatever you're doing, you're just smearing it around. It's it's really a problem when you're doing like a maple with a paduk together. A lot of times when you sand it, they like kind of blend together and they look a little mushy, which isn't the greatest. So compressed air. Pete. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with the compressed air. And also try raising a grain uh, when you're raising it and actually like, you know, kind of wipe away as you're wiping the board in between your sandings. And don't go too high because like Dan said, if you go, re if you're just turning into a powder and it's just getting into pores. Uh, but I would recommend actually raising the grain with, uh, I use 50-50 alcohol uh, to like 90% alcohol, rubbing alcohol to um, water because it flashes off a lot quicker. Go a little higher on the alcohol, might be good. Uh, and then the other thing that I've, I've used in the past with, uh, what's that cedar that's like purple almost, like very red, like I guess red cedar, right? Just whatever. It's good. The sapwood is very the Eastern, light. Eastern, Eastern red, red, red cedar. Yeah. So um, I think. the sapwood is very light and the heartwood is almost like purple. It's super bright. And when I would sand, I used to do charcuterie boards out of them and some random cookies and stuff. When I would sand it, it would just bleed over. So if it's a, a single stripe that you have, you maybe just like as you're wiping, applying oil, just wipe in that direction, wipe with that board so it doesn't go onto the other boards that are there. Just go straight down and let that oil soak in and fully dry. Uh, and then you're not getting any bleeding over to the side. If you're dipping in an oil or pouring a whole bunch on there, you're probably going to run into some issues. So try try applying a little less oil and just doing it in like a straight line and back and forth. Just yeah, Dan. Bef before Mike goes, I want to I want to ask you something. I have no input. I've never worked with Padu. Hmm. So do you Dan find do you find that that's like a catch twenty two situation where your your water popping it and raising the grain just to sand it again and and come come back to the same problem because you're sanding it and creating more quote unquote powder. I think, well, I'm thinking of the water pop. I just water pop because I water pop everything when I'm sanding. But what you can do is you can actually take that as an opportunity to wipe away. Don't just spray it actually like wipe away some of the stuff. So okay. if it lifts up any of the, the material. But after you water pop it, you generally sand it again. Yeah. I'll sand it again. And then usually, you know, I'll do it maybe two, three times. If I'm really trying to go crazy, I'll do three times. Um, I'm asking because I struggle with this yeah. too. This is a good question. Yeah. I, I water pop everything and I take that as an opportunity anytime I'm working with woods that do have a lot of sawdust or whatever. I mean, this even happens with like, it could happen with walnut and maple, right? Side by side, you know, you're getting bleed over. If you're, especially if you're sanding too high, like there's some people that they see 600 in a store and they use 600 on a cutting board. You don't need that. No. Yeah, honestly, you could get away with 180. This thing's going to get chopped up anyways, but like 220, 240 is like the, what everyone goes to. Never go beyond that. Because at that point, the, du the dust also gets Never so fine. Never go full 320. <laughs> Never go full 320. The dust gets really, really fine and it starts going into the pores and really packing in there. And it, it's just like talcum powder at that point. Mm -hmm. you know? okay. I like to hit everything with a microfiber cloth as well as the, um, yep. the dust things. I like to take a lot of my decor stuff to 400. So I, I don't know that I, I mean, I take a, every, actually the table I just did is 400, every table, anytime I have a surface that people are going to put their hands on, it goes to 320 or 400, but I do agree that 220 and 180 is pretty good. Like it's going to be just fine for the most for part a cutting board. for a cutting board. I, I usually, I mean, cause I use, I mean, I use Odie's Odie's, which is another thing stuff. you wipe it on so, yeah, and actually find that that does not bleed. I have used it on boards with Paduke in it and I have not had as much bleed because can, you put it on and just kind of like let it chill and it just cures. You can also get yourself a tack cloth, which is a cloth that's made to microfiber cloth. That's what that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that what that is? A microfiber yeah, cloth? That's all, it's microfiber oh. cloth. Yeah, it's the same thing. It just gets really, basically, I like to sand it to where the microfiber cloth doesn't grab anymore. And that's usually 320. It's like a good rule of thumb too. Grabbing anything. Good thinking. So what, like with that table, because I was doing, it's English Elm really wide open grain really wide open grain like like white oak wide open grain i was blowing it off between sandings and then once i got above 180 i was hitting it with the microfiber cloth because that gets everything out of there and you'll, you'll be like oh this looks pretty good then you hit it with the microfiber cloth you're like whoa this looks really good there's a lot more depth that pulls out all that crud so a microfiber cloth and an air compressor is a really good thing to have around you when you're doing that finishing process yeah um 
next question is from question. Mo Cho, the Cho Mo, who no, I don't know what I'm doing. Moses Cho. Hey guys, it's Moses with Chosen Craft Co. Um, I was thinking about this the other day and, you know, money, 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 money is, I mean, I was thinking about money for sure. Yeah. But, you know, money is a driving factor for a lot of us. And I think you guys have made it clear, especially Dan. Uh, I don't know why I called you out, Dan, but, you know, it, it makes sense. At the end of the day, you want to make a profit. Um, but whatever project that you take, it, it should make sense. Um, so sometimes you raise the prizes and prices and all the kind of all those kind of fun stuff. But um, what is something that you will never build, regardless of how much someone pays you? I don't know. You guys might have to think about this one. But um, I honestly, I don't know. I should have probably thought about it before I asked the question, so that I could tell you mine. But I lost my chance. Anyways, can't wait to hear you guys. Thanks. Pete. For me, it's not what I wouldn't build. It's what I wouldn't do. And that's refinish old furniture. I've done so many refinishing jobs and I hated all of them. And I was literally kicking and screaming the entire time. A tabletop. Yeah, I, I, I might do it. That's just saying it, whatever. But if it has like some gnarly, like turned legs on it. Molding. with Yeah, forget it. Or crazy molding. I'm not doing it. I, I don't care how much you pay me. That's a lie. I'll probably do it for like a lot of money, but it'd be a lot of money. I will not refinish old furniture unless it's like some like super serious, like 18th century door off this castle that we're going to put in our house because we're super rich now. Like, all right, well, you're going to pay me this much money, maybe. And in a year, you're going to listen to this, you know, when we're still doing a podcast, probably, hopefully. Uh, and that might change. Maybe I'll have a re refinishing business, but as of right now, I, I hate, I, I hate refinishing old furniture. It is literally the worst. Dan, what about you? Well, I've been known to say that I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you he took my answer. I hate refinishing stuff. Uh, it's you the worst. You the last job, right? <clears throat> refinishing yeah yeah actually i did i had my brother come in and do yeah. it uh he he tackled all the little details it had a ton of little details too it was a old that. it was an old like roll top desk and it had a bunch of little curvy little details i didn't want to touch it but i like money like moses said i don't know why he called me out but i do like money so i took the job and i was like hey tommy my brother i'll pay you this to do this and he did it so we all came out ahead um another thing i probably won't do is uh murphy doors not doing them not doing them i don't know i might for the right price now that i know how to do them properly thank you nick uh there's not a whole lot i wouldn't do for money ask me twenty dollars is twenty dollars <laughs> that's right that's right what about you mike what what won't you do for money uh, Pete's answer is good. Refinishing. I did refinish a tabletop, but it involved like putting some bow ties in there. That was actually kind of a fun project. So, but like, yeah, like old furniture that I didn't make anything. I don't really want anything to do with that, but um, I won't do anything that I perceive to be a liability to coffee custom builds. And oh, one of those things is very good answer. a, um, <laughs> is those like epoxy tables where it's like a piece of wood completely encased in in epoxy like i finished one of those but i didn't build that and i won't i won't build those because i know for a fact in three or four or four or five years those things are going to be sagging and having problems there's just no way that that wood movement is going to that wood movement's going to keep moving and eventually that thing is going to sag and there's going to be problems people are going to be getting a bunch of phone calls in the next five ten years that's all i'm saying i won't build those i won't have anything to do with those when it's like two pieces of live edge with like the river table style I mean, I don't really want to build those, but you know, $15,000 is $15,000. So I'll build one, but, but like those fully encased epoxy ones, I, I won't touch them. I just know that. I mean, you can at me all you want, but those things are going to become a problem in, in like a decade or a half a decade for people. That's always so worried me too. There's just, there's just no chance. I, that I did. Did I tell you guys about the table, that, that table, that white elm table, Yeah. the sag. What? So I, yeah, I didn't, I never told you guys he called, he called me, um, 
he's a great customer. He's bought a bunch of stuff for me. I just did the finish work on that thing. Uh, and when he got it, I initially told him, I was like, Hey, you're, this base is not going to be big enough. It's a 10 foot table. It's a six foot base. So there's two feet overhanging on both sides. I said, uh, this thing's like mostly plastic and, uh, you have it in a, in a South facing room that's going to get a lot of sun and this thing's going to heat up. Yeah. The side, I mean, three weeks after I was done, he called me. We're actually still in the middle of dealing with it. I'm actually helping him out. I have no need to help him. I just want to help him because he's a good customer and he doesn't own a truck. I actually picked, came and took the uh, top off of the uh, table with him and I drove it to a metal guy who's adding uh, lengthening, extending the bed or the uh, table base for him. Um, that thing sagged. I mean, it was like three inches of sag in three weeks. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if that was all you that you built that whole thing? I would be. Can you imagine? Hundreds mode. of dollars of epoxy work. Hundreds. Yeah, hundred. Hundred of dollar. <laughs> no i mean he's like twenty three hundred dollars new i quoted him originally for it and then i i actually he said hey i don't think i want to go there i was like actually you know what i was going to tell you i don't want to quote this job anymore i just don't want to do a job like this and that was where kind of i'd made the decision where i won't do one of those tables um because i quoted him i'll be straight up i quoted him fourteen thousand dollars and he ended up spending more than that on this table so far so he's like i wish you would have done it i was like well i actually wouldn't have done it uh anyways so i wasn't going to do it so he spent a lot of money on this table um and he's a good guy i feel really bad for him he's really proud of his table he spent a lot of time making it you know and it's got all these problems so I'm 100 just men him. 100 days i didn't make that table yeah <laughs> but actually you know Everyone's i'm gonna so agree tired. with you like i if because as far as items that i wouldn't build i i don't think i would ever tackle for a customer maybe for myself just to like get it out of the way and try it out myself I would not for a customer do an epoxy river table, like an enclosed one or something like significant. I think epoxy work really scares me when it's at bucket level. So Mike says that the fully encased tables are going to have problems. I think just the, even the river table. I think even the river tables. I think think river table. Well, I think the one thing that can, is going to help with those river tables is the bases. I think the bases are going to really help because I see the guys that do them, you know, correctly they have some pretty significant beefy bases underneath them so i think there's gonna be a lot of help from that yeah i don't know how much the c channel is actually gonna help with that but i i mean i really don't i think that it resting on the long stretchers it's really gonna help with but i don't know i think it's it's pretty iffy stuff but we'll see you know yeah hit us up in five years let us know yeah yeah Uh, question for you guys like uh what about like hi yo obviously like we've all done like case work and stuff like would you ever do cabinets like I just love heck yeah cab- just cabinets i would love to mm-hmm. absolutely i feel like it wouldn't excite excite me like but i would definitely like take the money but i'm like i if somebody told me to build it's a not exciting now, but i would really have to be like oh it's right. not exciting but it takes a very specific skill set and it is kind of an art form it is an art form. it takes a skill there set. is I bought- good money there there is good money i, I, I have my big cnc as opposed to bad money i want to that's one of the things i want to do with my big cnc when I, I want to start building that stuff, when we get into this new house, I want to start building some vanities and some built-ins. And uh, I actually, I've already gotten a quote from Mosaic, which is the cabinet maker software. So that Mosaic is sick. I don't know if either one of you guys have looked into no, that. Never heard you can it. literally import a drawing from anything, any CAD uh, drawing, and it'll you bring it into Mosaic. And it's not like a spire. I mean, it's like a spire, I guess, but it'll basically break down everything into panels It'll nest it so it uh, uses the least amount of plywood sheets. Oh, so it like It'll actually get... sets up the CNC oh, cut for you. Oh, it sets up the cut for you, but then it also labels every piece. Oh, that's dope. It puts a label out, and you pr- and it, <laughs> and it cu- you hook up your printer to it. It puts out a, a cuts out the or a prints out a label, and you put that on the piece of wood for someone to go assemble it. So you can have like an operator cutting, and then another guy assembling. It's pretty sick. So that's mosaics, actually pretty dope. it's only like 115 bucks a month. So I, I'm going to try to start chasing that stuff in 2022. That's one of the things See, I want to chase. And so. the reason I asked that is because I am, that's not something that I would never do for money, but it's something that I like, it, at least within the next couple of months to a year, if someone asks me for like cabinets or kit, like a kitchen, whatever, I'm going to say, no, I don't want it. Like, even if they're like really kitchen. want it, but like, it's, it's not Margins so much that like, cause right kitchens. now, the thing is like, for me personally, this is not my main business. This is my, my side gig. And I want to do stuff that excites me right now. I want to kind of get back into the swing of things of just with like fun, exciting projects. That's why I'm stoked to make stuff for the house. And for me to just work on like cabinets, 
I'd be like, mm, I'm gonna have to pass for now. But eventually, got, that you're right. I, there's money in that. I've got a customer. So like the bottom line is like coffee custom builds and I'm not, I don't want to speak for Dan, but Dan, I mean, there's just guys that do kitchen cabinets day in and day out and the margins are low and they're just going to smoke you on the price. Like no one's going to come to Pete or Mike or Dan and say, can you build me a kitchen yeah. cabinets? Cause there's guys that do it and they do it better. But I've got a customer who owns a cabin and they're like, Hey, we have this specific look we want for the, it's a yeah. special order. Like they're not looking for building. That's grade. what I would be they, after. And they what, will yeah, pay exactly. for that. Yep. They are, they're going to, they know going into it. And this guy knows, cause he's, <clears> I know <throat> the industry he's in, he knows how this works. He's not asking for a builder grade cabinet, a kitchen cabinet setup. Well, it's custom. He wants a custom cabinet and that's the kind of stuff I do want to do. But exactly. you know, I also kind of want to start getting better at the uh, built and stuff. So anyway, yeah, um, this next question is from Sam Zook. Let me write down the time. Hey, fellas, it's Sam Zook with Heirloom Woodshop. I saw they were running a two-for-one special on podcast questions this week, so I picked up a couple of them for you guys. First, I was listening to the episode that you just did, Mike, of building a furniture brand with Ethan Abramson. Um, for anyone that hasn't listened to it, you absolutely should go listen to, to that episode and, quite honestly, to every other episode because Ethan does a fantastic job. Um there's a lot of great information in your episode specifically, Mike. One of the things that you mentioned was that you think that there are certain tools that are absolutely worth paying top dollar for. Uh, I wanted to ask you and 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 also Dan and Pete, you know, what tool would you say is absolutely worth spending a f pretty fair amount of money on, right? Like we can all get, you know, a cheap drill and, drill and driver, um, you know, you can, you can cheap out on some stuff, but what's the tool that you think is absolutely worth spending a premium for? The second question I have is uh, I am going to have an opportunity here in the near future to work on a black walnut dining table from the 1880s. Um, it's not stained. It's been refinished a couple of times, but it has that, that natural look of black, of black walnut that has lightened with age. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm going to have to do for it is build a couple of new table leaves. Now, we all know that you can stain lighter wood to be darker, but in this case, I'm going to have to try to lighten new walnut to match the old. So my question is, if you guys have any ideas for going about how to do that, how would you go about doing that? Thanks. I love listening to the podcast. I haven't called in a lot at all in the last couple of months, but you know, I, I still listen to the podcast and I think you guys are doing a great job. So thanks. Have a good night. Thanks, Sam. Dan. I think the, the one tool that comes to mind right off the top of my head that, that I think is worth, you know, buy once cry once type of thing is, you know, it's the cornerstone of most wood shops is the <sighs> table saw. I think we can all agree on that. I mean, electric yeah. hand planer, table saw, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, table saw for sure. That's going to be on all our tool. lists. <laughs> I mean, a good quality table saw. Once you get one, you're going to know the difference. You're going to feel the difference. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, how did I live without this for so long? Yeah. Facts. So that that's my answer for that. Uh, as far as your second question about lightening up wood. First of all, you're going to do some test pieces before you do it on the actual pieces, Sam. Uh, you could try bleach. Just do it. You can try peroxide. Mm -hmm. Those are the two I would try first. Or, you know, if those don't work, maybe try to stain them to match. I know that doesn't quite reverberate with everybody the same way, but... Rubio makes a pretty decent product. Uh, I believe it's they're white, they're pure white or whatever it is. Cotton white and white. Yeah, I think that would be good. Or you know, you could go the opposite route and stain everything with the Rubio chocolate. That'll bring the color up or darker. Darken it. Words are hard. Pete, help me out here. So. Uh, was the oh, first one the tool? So, I like the table saw, I like that answer. But if you're if you're actually do enough work, I think a sander. It, I know it, it. It seems silly when you're starting out. It it seems silly to me until I use the sander I have now. We all I think we all uh, have the well we all good. have the It's good. like because 
it's the pro it's the tool that touches every project. I don't care if I made it on a bandsaw or you know on the table saw or hand cut whatever. This is one of the last tools that I use on it. A sander will literally make that experience a lot more fun. Now it's it might not be at the top of everyone else's list, but I think it it's something that really is remarkable to have. Uh, the other thing is, and this might not be that you're going for the top, but it's robots, robots for your shop. 3D printer, Creality makes a fine printer. Pine is fine, the Ender's fine, but I can run my printer 24 seven while I sleep and it's perfect every single time. I don't have to worry about it. And it costs me almost a grand, but it literally just, it works while I sleep. You can't get that kind of quality from a printer that's lower end. Yeah, you can, but you're going to put a lot of work into it. And a lot of us don't have time to be tweaking stuff. We just want things to work. You know, imagine that every time you had to cut something on your table saw, you had to do 10 minutes of tuning. Get out of here. Nobody wants that. And like CNC is just the same thing. Now, granted, a $3,000 CNC is not the top of the line. You're not going all out crying once, but do not, and I cannot stress this enough, do not get an Amazon CNC. Spend a two, three grand, get something, get a Shapeoko, get an X-Carve, get a Onefinity, whatever you decide, get something in that caliber. Everything below that is junk. Same, you know, the lasers, they're good for engraving. You're not gonna cut anything, so you're limiting yourself. But like those, those are my recommendations. Get something that's a higher caliber of those tools. Mike? Nope, how would you lighten wood? Oh, how would I lighten wood? Uh, well, Dan had the perfect answer, uh, bleach. And I think you can mix that with, would you mix it with water a little bit? You, you don't want to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could mix, mix it with water. water. Can you yeah. mix it with something else? I feel like. I I would steer knows. clear of mixing bleach with anything other yeah, than Yeah, yes, no, you're right. Just, I think I'm, I'm thinking of peroxide. Just be safe. But yeah, peroxide is also a good one. And then the other thing is walnut's a, a very, it's a very varied wood in color. It can go from like, like light chocolatey sap wood uh, to very, very dark, almost purple colors. So go to your local lumber yard, look at the, you know, it's a little hard to see sometimes with the rough lumber. So look at the uh, S4S section or honestly bring a little block plane, set it very yeah, you can thin, get some. just clean up the piece of wood a little bit just to see what's on there. You might be able to match it. You can get some sure. planks that are pretty, pretty heavy on the sap wood that'll make it look lighter yeah. for sure. That's definitely. That's a good, so, that's a good answer. So try that out. Uh, that's a lot less work too. What about you, Mike? I'll start with the walnut one. I just don't think it's as big of an issue as you think it might be. Like, I don't think the walnut is really so light that you can't find wood to match it at the mm -hmm. lumber store. Like the guys are saying, I just don't think it's that light. I don't know how light walnut gets. I guess that I didn't know that was a thing where walnut gets super light over time. What if it's just a top uh, layer? It's like faded. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking like it, it could very well UV be. I think it, it lightens up as it, it gets. It does lighten up from UV light. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I think if you sand it down, it might be yes. good. Yeah, I think he just needs to sand it and he's not going to have any issue. I think it's kind of a non-issue, honestly. I think you sand that wood, you go to the lumber store, get something pretty close. Uh, literally the only person who's going to notice that they aren't the exact same color is a woodworker so yeah. move past it i think um but the other thing about the tools um it really depends on where you're at but obviously table saw man dan hit the nail on the head i mean that's such an important tool of to the shop it's so central to the shop don't don't go cheap there uh i see some guys in, in some shops and i'm like man that's a that's a really crappy table saw you know it's a I, you can definitely get stuff done on those saws you can they work for sure but I just, it just makes your life so much better to have that nice table saw, but that really goes for a lot of big tools. I mean, a lot of these tools, it's the same thing. I mean, you do this for a living. You want to invest in your tools because your job gets just easier. You don't have to worry about things not working or um, actually, you know, Ben's podcast, they were talking about tool grading and how those things, why things are priced differently. And I can't remember who the original, I, I used to mention this before, but you talk about companies like Jet, Laguna, Powermatic, all these brands, they all come from the same like three factories in Taiwan. The difference between the brands is grading and the grading is based on their um, tolerances. Uh, tolerances. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's based on their tolerances. I mean, one brand is more expensive than the other because they have tighter tolerances and the grading literally, I think it's like AB 
D F like there's like a, there's like four grading levels. So basically anything from that green brand that you can get at home Depot, um, their, their, uh, tolerances are really bad. Like you're just, there's just a very real, real chance that you buy those tools and they're, you're just never going to get a square cut off of them. It's very real possibility that you just can't get a square cut off of a Ryobi tool or something. Now that doesn't matter if you're framing a house out. So they're great for DIY stuff. But if you're trying to build an armoire or a, or a secretary uh, desk, you're not going to be able to do it with those tools. You just can't. They can't do it. So are you going to do that as a hobbyist? Are you going to build a secretary's desk? No, yeah. no, probably not. So you don't really need to worry about it so much. So don't waste your time on those kind of tools. But you're probably going to want to make some pretty cool straight rips and make some, some cutting boards so that table saw thing comes back around again and you probably want to spend the money on it. Even if you're doing this on a hobbyist level, Find one that you can kind of know is a good name brand uh, because you kind of want to just not have to F with that tool and fix it all the time and have to realign it. You just kind of want, I've never had to reset up my saw stop. Never. My Laguna, when I had my Laguna, I set it up one time. I never had to set it up again. It just doesn't go out. My craftsman from the eighties, I would make, I would do a night's worth of cutting and the next day it would be out and I'd have to realign it. It was so frustrating. And that was one of those things where I got that Laguna and I was like, oh, this does matter when you spend some money on these tools. Now, I didn't get into woodworking to tune up tools all the time. That's not fun at all to me. I want to cut straight pieces of wood off my table saw. So it depends on what you want to do. So for like for me, a lot of the upright tools and the powered hand tools are have a lot of money into them because I don't want to deal with it. And if they break down, I just want to send it back and get it back fixed and in brand new shape. I don't want to deal with it. I don't have time for that. Uh, do I need a $50 plug cutter? No, (laughs) I'll just get the cheapest one on Amazon. It's dirt cheap. You just get the cheap one and use it. It's a consumable at that point. Do I need a super duper nice flathead screwdriver in my shop? No, I have the same one I've had since I was eight. Like my dad gave it to me as a throwaway from his nice set of craftsmen's or whatever. You know, you just don't need certain things. And he made the point, uh, Sam made the point about the drill driver set. You don't really need them. I don't, I have a really nice drill driver set. I don't even show it. I mean, I feel weird even showing it. Like it's such a ridiculous thing to have to, to promote spending that kind of money on a drill driver set. The Ryobi drill driver set spins just as well as the Milwaukee or the Festool or the DeWalt. They work just fine. Again, that goes back to what you're doing. I mean, if, right. if you're a contractor like and you're constantly like doing that day in and day out, hour yeah. after hour, I Maybe you don't want the Ryobi. Yeah, I worked at my family's business. Uh, at the, the dry, they were metal stud and drywall guys. No one, none of those guys used. We wouldn't. If someone showed up to the job site and we handed them a Ryobi. They'd just quit and go to another company. <laughs> They're not going to use those tools. Those guys won't use the tools. We had two tools on those jobs, or three. We'd have Hilti, which is what everyone wanted, was the Hilti tools, um, and we'd have Milwaukee and Dewalt. You know, yeah. uh, those were the best tools, and there was a reason. Those things were literally running eight to 12 hours a day and we'd still break them all the time but we get them replaced really quick because it was a good tool with a good warranty and that that's what matters and so dan's 100 right it depends on what you're doing yep. the answer isn't the same for everyone like if i was a scroll saw person i'd have a pretty dope scroll saw but i'm yeah. not so i don't have a scroll saw so it doesn't make any sense so if i like was to go mess around and go grab one I'd probably just buy the cheapest one I could find, which I've had two different scroll saws since I got into woodworking. Two separate times I've gone, I think I want to get into scroll saw work. And then I cut someone's name out and go, I hate this. And I sell it like four minutes later. And I've done that twice. I've had two now. through my like, shop as well. Yeah, I think I've maybe turned on one of them. I'm like, you know what? That does look really fun. And it does look fun. It's just some of these woodworking things I try to get myself into. And then I'm like, oh yeah, this is. But that's almost a hobby on its own, you know? And it, But if that's your thing. It could be, but right. I like, don't like it. So. Like some, there's plenty <laughs> of people out there me. that like uh, uh, Aaron from Aaron B Designs doesn't even own a table saw. She gets all her stuff S4S, but she does crazy stuff on a CNC. And that's what she spent money on. Everything else is just entry level grade stuff. So yeah, like it, it all depends need. on what you do and what makes sense for you. Yep. So that's a long answer, but, but yeah, I mean, if I was, if I was like a, a guy who, who on the weekends or professionally made really amazing, uh, made really amazing like uh, barbecue i wouldn't have a really nice festival drill driver set i'd have a really nice smoker it doesn't yeah. make sense to, like, it just depends what you do with your time so there's certain things you do and don't need i think that for woodworking on any 
level, I think that Pete's example is is kind of extreme. Obviously, she she's getting away with uh, without not needing a table saw. I think pretty much everyone needs a table saw on any level for the well, but, in the world. But it's an example, like but you, you know, that's the focus. Oh, yeah, that's an sure. extreme example yeah, no, because, not, like, yeah. I agree with you 100. percent So anyway, that's a very long answer for that, but uh, it's all relative. Whatever you find so. reaching for the most in your shop is probably a thing you need to upgrade next. Yeah. So what, how, so, which direct, if it's a business, what direction do you want to take your business yeah. in? I wanted to have automation involved in my business. So I took my business in that direction. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Long story is get the tools that you use the most and spend money on them. If you don't use a lot of flathead uh, screwdrivers, don't spend a lot of money on them. So um, anyways, that's kind of the show. That is the show. We can't end on flat flathead screwdriver hate. Why? They're the worst. Uh, so you. I don't have enough. I mean, you're gonna make a lot of electricians mad, but everything oh, electrical is flathead. So dumb. But also, Phillips head also dumb. Torques are yeah, GTFO. Did yep. you know that you can get Torx pocket heads or pocket hole screws from what? Minecraft? What? Really? Yeah, they have them on Amazon. I just found them today. I just ordered what? a bunch of them. Oh, I hate those Craig ones. Those square drivers are trash. I I'll, you know, things. I'll take a square, a good square, a, one, a screw that won't strip. I'll take a square over a Phillips head, honestly. Eh, no strip I like my screws to strip, if you know what I mean. Girl, stop throwing ones at my screws. Don't laugh, come on. We're going to repair then. Yeah, Milescraft, they have the all the sizes, coarse and fine, with a Torx head. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm just hey, hey, girl, you looking fine. <laughs> well, I hate this shit. Dan's trying to get some Torx head. Mike, take us out of here. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> oh, God, Pete. I hate this shit. Guys too. and gals, you guys are the best. Go get entered in the, if you're a patron, go get entered in the uh, Tumblr giveaway. Um, Just poke myself. Not the eye. website, <laughs> but, but the cups. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for the support, guys. Please be sure to share the show if you can. You know, we'd like to get some new people in here. It's always fun when we get new people, especially, look, the people that engage, we love you so much. Oh, God, if it's so much fun. Ever love. not engaged with the show? Yeah. Like, if you haven't engaged with, just engage with us. There's like nothing. We just love it. Like, it's awesome. Like, and I'm not saying tell us how much you love the show. Just ask us questions, get some questions into the show, write in, say something you didn't like. I don't know how that's possible, but uh, write something in that you didn't like or that you did like or whatever. Just do what you got to do. Anyway, yeah. interact with the show and then and those, uh, get those ridiculous reviews in. Ridiculous yeah. reviews. <laughs> I was actually thinking about how we need a song for the reviews. And I'm so glad Dan was able to sing that new intro for us. I'm so excited about editing this tonight. I'm just so pumped. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Get us those reviews in, make sure they make no sense. Make sure they're five stars and make sure there's a, they're about itching. Cause that seems to be a theme we're running about. So, yeah, um, it's really concerning how much <laughs> check how many of them are about itching. Send in some questions, send in some, honestly, ask the questions you're always afraid to ask. Like, right. am I supposed I to know. itch here? Is, yeah, am I supposed to itch here? Or, or flat? Why is, this so is it okay itchy? to like flathead screw drivers? No. It's not. We'll answer not. it right now. <laughs> um, anyway, go check us all out on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Etsy. Check out the podcasts, Etsy. And if you're not subscribed to the podcast, YouTube, please do that. That would help us a lot. We're trying to get to a thousand subs over there so we can monetize this thing um and yeah you can just support us in a bunch of ways and choose how you want to and just listening we, is one way to if do we it. monetize this thing more tumblers are coming oh yeah more tumblers every day i'm tumbling <laughs> all right nope that was uh pediocre for sure hey. Everyone have a great night. <laughs> See you later bye. 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 bye 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 love you long time <laughs>